Kevin, it's so lovely to have you on Living Stones. We're blessed already because you've been putting a few scriptures up. We can see that you are a man of the Spirit, and I've actually known you a long time, and I know that for a fact. So it's great to have you on Living Stones. So could I ask you, please tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to know the Lord. Really appreciate um, this opportunity. And currently, as I begin to just mention what I do, I work in the social housing sector. And people know these days that affordable housing and available housing is a, a national challenge. And, and I'll just throw out a statistic. In the last five months um, alone, 149,000 bids have been placed on 457 properties. That shows you the the challenge, the great challenge. It's a it's pretty desperate situation. But even in that challenging situation, Paul, I realise in this journey that I've done into social housing that um, support workers, housing officers. Uh, organisations uh, involved in housing, how they continually help people to get along in life. I, I used to work in constructural engineering. It was one day in the factory where, where I worked and it was break time. And so my friend was a welder. So we used to, all of us come and just go in the welding pen together. They used to call it a welding pen, but it was just a, a little place with screens around and we sat down there I was reading the newspaper drinking tea few others lit a few cigarettes up and all this type of stuff and a general conversation and then uh, this fella named Roy stood up and he pulled a book out of the locker he had a, a locker and I asked what you're reading Roy he says I'm preparing for a Sunday school class and I thought here we go Religion again. I said, here we go. Religion again. And uh, I jumped off the bench. I put my tea down and, and I started pointing my finger at him. And I said, I oh, know there's a God, Roy. And I oh, know that he created everything. But you know what? If if I had a wish right now, guess what it would be? And he says, what would it be, Kev? I says, I wish God would take everything I've ever done wrong or said compress it into his hand, hold it real tight, throw it away forever, and I don't want to see it again. And also, I want to know who the true God is. That's what I'd like to know, Roy. I know he's there. I don't know, you know, there's that many religions in, in, in the world. I don't even know which religion. Um, and, and I felt so unworthy and all this. Um, and I just sat down and... The hooter hoot went, he just says, oh, OK, so the, the the buzzer, I'll call it a buzzer. We went back to work at the sound of the buzzer. Nothing happened. That conversation I would not repeat to you, Paul, except next day when I woke up, I lived in a bed seat at the time. Everywhere was bright and I mean really bright. It was the month of May. And I was very tearful and, and the sun was shining through the window and I started to cry. And I just had this thought in my mind, a dominant thought. And this thought, it wasn't a voice, an audible voice. It was Jesus Christ is who he says he is. You've got to become a born again Christian. That's that's what it, that's all that was in my mind. And then I started to cry and I was squinting. Then I thought, I've got to go outside, got dressed and all that, went out for a walk. The clouds were so low and I started crying and I couldn't stop crying. Jesus Christ is who he says he is. You've got to be a born again Christian. That day I went to work, I was tearful and, and I was just left, as it were, in this kind of new um, feeling, new experience, new encounter. A couple of days later, I said to Roy, I said, Roy, I'm going to go to church. I feel I'm going to become a, a real Christian, a real one. And so I went to meet my fiance at the time and I was walking past the church in Bilston 
And I, I stood outside that church and I was so afraid. And I thought, I've, I've got to go in there and I've got to become a Christian, a born again one like, like Cliff Richard. That's all I could think of. It was related to the tennis at the time because um, I'm trying to think of, was it Sue Barker who he, he was friends with? So I plucked up the courage. I walked into the church. I didn't know I was walking into the prayer meeting. And it was like I went into a shop to be served. And uh, the pastor stood up and said, I know him as pastor now. I didn't then. He stood up and says, can we help you? I says, yeah, I want to be a born again Christian, exactly like Cliff Richard. I don't <laughs> just want to go to church. I want to be born again. Can you make me one of those born again ones? He says, yes. He says, what you need to do is kneel down and pray the sinner's prayer. Well, I, I've never prayed that before. So I got on my knees, repeated a prayer after him. And then I stood up and said, thank you very much. And then I left the church and I went up to that town to go and meet my fiance. And that was it. And I was crying and weeping for weeks. Um, and that was the beginning of my journey. And that's how it happened exactly like that. Roy and I, we became friends. We got on with each other. He invited me to sing and give my testimony at the New Testament Church of God and share a message back then. But the whole thing was a, a strange journey, Paul, and I've had trouble explaining what happened to me to people. Okay, well, I can tell that the Holy Spirit was already working on you, Kevin, when you said you wished that the Lord could get your sins and throw them, because that does actually remind me of the scripture which says as far as the east is from the west so far as he removed our transgressions from us so i can see that the hand of the lord was on you already be before roy pulled out that book from his locker so speaking about books i know that you are a writer also because um, I remember a time in my life when I couldn't seem to pick up a magazine without an article in it from Kevin Coley. But it's, yeah. gr it's great the way the Lord has used you in that way. Could you tell us a little bit about how that began? Yeah, I mean, it's also ending that way as well. Um, but it began through sermons. Um I always remember when, when I lived in my, my bed seat, I didn't when I walked into church, I realized that people do talks. And I and I thought, that's amazing. Because when, when I become a Christian, everything kind of made sense. Um and I thought, I I feel I want to do a talk one day. And so I, I wrote down um this message and I says, you know what, God, if I ever get an opportunity to preach this message. And I wrote it out in capital letters. And that is the first time, other than a couple of songs, and I used to four chord bash and used to write some songs, but that is the first time I ever wrote anything, um, what I would call from a writing perspective. Um, and that's how it started, by writing my very first sermon. And I waited quite a while for that more than 12 months then i got the opportunity one day to preach my first sermon but before i preached it it was written down i still write out my sermons today um i've started to write them more in in full and, and i broadcast them from a script but uh since then i've written for the the express and star and I've, when they was doing alpha i did a little column for the secular newspaper and i found that an incredible challenge but it's something i would have liked to have done more of um didn't get that opportunity but to write about alpha from a preachy type of view if you like was was quite a an encouragement to me and i enjoyed writing for the, the secular audience in that sense I, I wrote for a couple of National Christian magazines, uh, Joy was one. I like devotionals. And, and I've just kind of, the thing we write, and it takes time. It takes so much time. And, you know, I get there before the Lord. And I, I kind of ask these days, you know, what do you want me to do? I enjoy putting out a Bible verse nearly every day, if I can, and just say something very briefly 
about that. If I write a devotional book, it's going to be called 52 Sermons I Preach to Myself. These now that I share are my leaving sermons. And I see myself, you know, at the age that I am, that, yeah, I'm leaving. It's temporary. We're all passing through this world. And I'll, I'll probably do that. So that's where I'm at with my writing. It takes time. And God opens doors and opportunities to do that. Yes, he does. Praise God. So you weren't a writer, were you, when you were younger? Did you have some problems writing? Shall, shall I tell you the secret then? Yeah. <laughs> it's an open secret. So remember that first sermon that I told you about? Yes. Okay. Well, I wrote it out and I had a phrase in that sermon called God loves human beings. Now, I spelt human beings then. I was way ahead of my time. U-M-A-N, human, and beings, B-E-A-N-S. Okay. So, right. I wasn't illiterate. It was just I, I wrote as I spoke. And that that's what happened. And I'll give it another little open secret and uh, something I learned about God early in my days, how I'm glad he doesn't answer some of the prayers the way I, I'd, I suppose I'd want him to. But I remember the word, kindle. That was a word I picked up in, in, in church. And I thought it meant to put out, put something out. So when they kindle a candle or whatever it was, how, how I picked it up, it, it I thought it means to put out, but it, it doesn't. It, it means the opposite. And <laughs> I was, but Lord, kindle your wrath against me. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so that's, I'm sorry for not being intelligent enough and, and not going to school, but honest, that's how it was for me. And a couple of years later, three years later, I went to Bible college, but the Bible college said they would accept me on one condition that I had to do an English O level. And I did. I did that English hour level of Bible college. I was 20, 29 when I got my English hour level. So there you go. Um, well, that's interesting because years ago in the medieval years, English writers used to spell how they spoke, which is what you were saying. And it wasn't until Dr. Samuel Johnson wrote the first dictionary that we all thought yeah we better get this together to start having some uniformity about these spellings <laughs> but even now the english language it's not the easiest one to get into writing so yeah you yeah. do you do great kevin well done <laughs> yeah. so there you go a couple of open secrets yeah oh, yeah I, okay I so next question how is the lord ministering to you in your life presently yeah, there's a couple of areas, really, that, that, that God's ministering to me. And I think one is restoration. I had my second heart attack last year, and, and it's restoration in all areas of my life, Paul. Um, the second heart attack last year, I had an heart attack previously 16 years to that, previously to that. And when you have an heart attack, you've got 50-50 chance of surviving, apparently. And what I felt was God gave me a verse of scripture. Though my flesh and heart may fail, God is the strength and of my heart and the portion of my life forever. And I held on to that promise. And every now and again, I say, Lord, though my flesh and heart may fail, you are the strength of my heart and you're the portion of my life forever. And, and that's where I am. So I've had to recover physically. I've had to lose some weight it, it, to, for health wise, not not any other kind of wise, really. Um, and so I'm finding restoration physically. Okay. I'm, find, I'm finding some restoration for my mental mental health as well. Um, sometimes, you know, mental hygiene is important, depending what you've gone through all, over the years and depending where you are in life, keeping the good thoughts in, keeping the bad thoughts out. And uh, God is restoring that. And uh, I, I read somewhere that you could uh, have 100,000 thoughts 
in one day. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know. But I know this. When the Apostle Paul says to take every thought captive to, to Christ, that is a lot of work we've got to do in a daytime, you know, for our mental health. If we have 100,000 thoughts a day, boy, it's going to take some mental energy, some spiritual energy. And so I'm, I'm working on that and uh, looking uh, positively on, on that side of things. But also my spiritual health, um, there's a lot of water in the bridge when, when you've been a Christian, under the bridge, when you've been a Christian for 39 years. And uh, God's really uplifted me and encouraged me um, to, you know, not just the restoration side of things, but the reconsecration. And he showed me the importance of reconsecrating myself to, to him. And I used to think, you know, number our days are right, um, like Moses. And so I thought, right, Monday, good day, bad day, uh, uneventful day, Tuesday. And used to think days as days. But I realised in, in this area of reconsecration that I'm not, there's a lot of micro moments in a day. And I'm at the point, you know, sometimes I'll, it'll be in the day and I'll say, Lord, is everything all right between us? And and I will have those times we got. Um, right now I'm on annual leave, so I can do that. But the specific moments in the day, early in the morning, late at night, through the night, uh, or whatever it may be. But I mean, I'm I'm numbering my days are right in that way, making new decisions. If if something goes wrong at ten o'clock in the morning, and I can put it right by eleven thirty, I'll do that. I'll say, Lord reconsecrate myself to you and rather than wait till tea time or for the sun to go down and through the day i'm doing that where am i spiritually is it all right between us am i is there anyone you want me to pray for is there anything you want me to do that i'm not doing is there anything i'm doing that you don't want me to do and and it's not so much where i'm obsessed with it but it, it's really good and it's great for me spiritually, health-wise, that God has called me, I think, at the moment to a time of reconsecration and restoration. And I'm enjoying it. And one of the things God has restored to me, and that's come through those two avenues, restoration and reconsecration, is the joy of my salvation, Paul. The ministry for me has been the best of times and the worst of times. And there's been times... You know, some might think I've lost my salvation and uh, sometimes the thought will drop in my head, I've lost my salvation, but I've not. I've lost the joy of my salvation. And I've realised the importance. That joy is my strength. And it doesn't matter what has gone through uh, the past. It doesn't matter what is happening in the present. It doesn't matter what is coming at me from the future. That joy is my strength. And at times I've had to say, Lord, can you restore the joy of my salvation? And I'm finding that I can do that any time of the day more often now where, you know, I wouldn't I wasn't do that. I, you don't even have to do anything wrong. Sometimes I've woken up and I feel, well, where's my joy gone today? Um, and God has really put that back into my life. And uh, 1 John 1, 7 for the blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin. It's it's in the the, the current present context so it's um forgiveness of every sin at conversion but it's also ongoing in the purity of heart and that's what i'm trying to reach out, out for god so those are the two areas where god's working for me right now okay thank you kevin that's a great point actually when someone may think they've lost their salvation you haven't you've lost the joy of your salvation great point Thank you for sharing that, Kevin. Okay, next question. What message do you have for your fellow brothers and sisters? Yeah, um, whether you're broken or whether you're blessed, keep on kicking the devil. That's the spiritual warfare that we are called to. And I'll put that as a little... Um, it was something I think I read through Tozer who got it from Alan Alan Redpath. I can't remember, but K O K T D. Keep on kicking the devil. We're in a spiritual warfare, and I would say if you can, 
and ask God to give you the wisdom and ask God to give you the grace and ask God to give you the strength to always overcome evil with good. Keep on kicking the devil. And you've got to find the context of that in our own life. So that's the first thing I would say, whether you're broken or whether you're blessed, keep on kicking the devil. And, and the other thing I'd say, Paul, is um, whether you're broken or whether you're blessed, keep on loving the Lord God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your mind, with all your soul. And, and that is so important. Um, mm. And them are the two things I would say. If uh, some believers would accept that, maybe. And uh, there we go on that. OK, Kevin, thank you. That reminded me of my mum, actually, who would, if I, if I got to forgive someone or something like that, and I'd talk to my mum about it, she'd say, give one in the eye to the devil. Go on, you can forgive them. Go on. Hey. <laughs> and so I, I recognise that. I mean, when you say give the devil a kick, you know, like, it doesn't sound very like, <laughs> biblical but <laughs> well, i understand exactly what you mean yeah overcome evil with good yes if okay them, um make that decision if you can resist that temptation if you can get get some strength you know and amen, uh, amen. Do oh, okay so then last question then kevin which book in the Bible have you been reading recently? Well, it's an interesting one because at the beginning of this year, um, I will give you the writings that I've been reading recently, but at the beginning of this year, I felt uh, a different approach to my Bible reading, and I felt that I need to take a photograph of some Bible outlines so you, you might have an appropriate book or you might have your own idea or you might find something on, on the Internet. But for me, it was I've got lots of commentaries, lots of books. I thought I'm going to take me some photographs or some Bible outlines and then I'm going to put them in a folder. So I've done 66 of them and uh, they're just general outlines in January. And I put one. So today is the book of Revelation, believe it or not. So I put one for every day for 66 days in my calendar. And it doesn't take long to read those outlines, but I do an outline. So I've got a, an outline every 66 days. I'll have an outline. It, when I read it, all depends. But it's just a photograph and I'll go through Genesis or Leviticus or and and that has been incredible. It's led me into not just studying. It's led me into grabbing particular understanding of books that I probably either forgot, didn't know about. I couldn't look deeper. In fact, I struggle for time, and so I, I will just grab the one thing if I can. Sometimes, if it's a day off or I got Sunday or I'm not trying to get a message together, I can go further into into study, and and that's the first thing. So every sixty six days in my calendar, it repeats itself a Bible outline for every day, and I choose what to focus on from that Bible outline. But um. I've been encouraged by the writings of John. Um, and so I was in much Wenlock um, just before Christmas. And I went into a second-hand bookshop and I got myself some cracking bargains. I, I used to have a Thompson chain reference when I was a kid, um, when I was a kid, when I was a new convert, <laughs> when I was 25, as it were. I used to have this, um, and it was an old cardboarded bible version of it and it all fell apart and, and i never had a thompson chain reference then for so 25 if i was 25 then and i'm 64 now paul it's got to be them 39 years but at, just before christmas there was a great um bible there and i've got a nice king james thompson chain reference i got a couple of calvin's books i got a couple of commentaries but the good thing that i got from there i got the wesleyan notes but i also picked up two fantastic commentaries on the Gospel of John. I've got William Hendrickson on John, and right now I'm enjoying the writings of John in whatever form. I, I believe the Apostle John wrote all five. Some might think it's a, a different John and an elder John, or some might think it's somebody else. But So for me, what I'm really enjoying is um, the Gospel of John, the letters of John, 
and the book of Revelation. And I, I was reading, um, and I'll, I'll kind of finish the answer to to this question with this. I was reading about John in, in his gospel. And he said, I have written these things. And I said, yes, you have. You've not only written the gospel, you've written three letters, you've written the book of Revelation, and I'm enjoying what you've written. And obviously inspired by the Holy Ghost and just enjoying the gospel of John. Okay, great. I thought you might mention John, actually, Kevin, because the uh, scripture you quoted earlier, you know, that... Um, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Yeah, John, the young disciple of Christ at the time, we presume he, it sounds like he was quite young, um, but lived a long time till he was in the spirit on the Lord's day and he yeah. heard a voice behind him, yeah. yeah. So, and we're so thankful for the book of Revelation at the moment because it's like a roadmap for us through the times we're going through. Wow, it, it, it is. Um, and God's word is, you know, if you can internalize it and get it into your heart, which, you know, and keep it there, it, it is the key for me um, these days. And uh, some days it's easier than others and uh, so forth. But and, and it is a revelation, the word of God, you know, um, with the Holy Spirit. And uh, I'm sure it's the whole counsel of God that saves as well. Okay, Kevin, thank you so much for sharing with us. And thanks again for being with us on Living Stones. You're a blessing to us. Praise God. I appreciate your encouragement. Thank you.